Good evening, Mayor, Council Members. Um, you know, I've really tried to stay away from staff issues since the beginning of the year. And um, 30milesofcorruption.com gets little bits and pieces of information about staff. And I thought today, I, I, I really decided to take this to the Human Resources Board. But it was canceled at the very last minute. The public wasn't notified. So I decided to bring this here. This may make some of you a little uncomfortable, but this came through 30 Miles of Corruption. I did speak with Mike Subarus about this, and I did want to take it to the board, but they weren't there, so I'm bringing it to you. Um, here we go. The HR department has now received a federal complaint that it discriminated against one of its employees based on sexual orientation. HR Director Dietrich terminated an employee without cause only because he was gay. Two, HR director has told her African-American employees that she is okay with them because she used to be married to a black man. This is highly offensive and further shows that she is unable to function as human resources director. Three, the human resources director has employees over to her house where she serves copious amounts of alcohol to them and then allowed them to drive knowing that they were drunk. Also, here are new issues that need to be addressed. Carly Myers was recently promoted as an analyst in the city manager's office. Carly has a history of prior inappropriate sexual behavior that she uses to get promotions. When she worked in code enforcement, she had a sexual relationship with past code enforcement manager Mark Salazar and then used that as leverage to get her initial promotion. Allegations are now being made that she did this, again, to get her position in the city manager's office. I know this is really uncomfortable to talk about. I have issues with this. I have written stories about this on 30milesofcorruption.com. I feel that we really need to take a look at this closely, and if these things are happening in any part of the city, it needs to be addressed. It needs to be talked about openly and honestly, because this is an issue, and this costs taxpayer a lot of money, and it needs to be addressed. Thank you very much. Yeah. City Manager. Yeah, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, um, I'd like an opportunity to, to respond, if, if, if I can, um, about the employee that's in the city manager's office or been promoted. Uh, the, the, the fact of the matter is, when the city council authorized the third uh, assistant city manager, uh, Mr. Al Zelenka, he merely transitioned some of his staff from the community development department uh, to his uh, now department in the, um, as an assistant city manager. So there, there were no promotions. There was a, a transfer of, of workspace uh, from uh, one floor to another floor, but there was no promotion involved. Um, now, I, I know, and, and you know, and uh, uh, the community knows that promotions are not based on sexual favors that, um, that, that, that um, has been accused of uh, this evening. And, and, and I think to make a statement like that publicly about an, employment, uh, an employee is so far below the belt. Um, how low can a person, is it appropriate to say that? Um, and I, I, I can't imagine why something like that would be said about an employee at a council meeting, a televised council meeting, um, I, I, I can't think of a motivation why someone would want to do that um, unless they're just plain mean-spirited. Um, I, I just can't. Maybe someone else can come up with a reason why that makes sense to do that in a public setting, but I can't. Um, we, we, we've had some peace, I think, at these council meetings the last several months. Um, I, I thought things were improving, um, but tonight is a new low. Um, since my time here, uh, since December 22nd, tonight, this, this is a new low. I, I, I don't think I've ever witnessed anything like this before in a public setting. So I, I, I will defend the staff. I'll be the first one, if the staff makes a mistake, I'll be the first one there to tell them you made a mistake and, and, and correct the behavior. Um, but when someone gets up and assassinates someone's character like this occurred, then I will defend that employee. Um, and, and I just will, and that's just the way it's going to be. So 
if more speakers want to come up and say things like that, then I, I'm going to respond. Thank you, City Manager, for those comments. Councilman Subaru, would you like to comment? You know, when I received the phone call, my advice was is these are hearsay things, and one has to be very careful. And my best advice to anybody in our audience and anybody that's listening on TV and archived later, um, if you have any information like this, bring it to our city manager. You know, employee records are confidential for that very reason that in case some of these things are unfounded, you know, it, it, it's just not good business to do. I don't recommend it ever. And again, any issues that I receive as a council member by anybody from the public, and I would assume that my fellow council members are the same way, we would refer them to our city manager who is in charge of these employees and, and bring it up to him to investigate, to look into, to find out if there was any uh, validity to the claims. Very, very important that that is done that way. And I think, Mr. City Manager, I think you said it best. Councilman Gardner. I'd like to thank City Manager for his comments. Um, I, I think it is important that people do as Council Member Subaru suggested. If you have a complaint about the behavior of a city employee, there is a process in the city to raise that complaint and there is a process to investigate the complaint and take whatever action is appropriate. To come into a council meeting and say those kinds of things about a, a city employee is uncalled for, below the belt, and disappointing. Councilman Davis, it's time to listen. I, I've been here six years, and I, I tell you, I've been through a lot. Uh, to the speaker, I'm, I'm shocked. This person, let's just say it's not true, which I, I'm hoping that it's not. To call someone out by name, I mean, you subject yourself to a lot of liability. The, the, the fact of the matter is, is that that person has a privacy uh, in their labor and the city manager and the employer will handle it. To come here on public television and to do that, I'm, in, in my 30 years in, in finance and, and handled a lot of uh, different employees and stuff, I've never seen that ever. Even when you're in private industry, it's just, that is unbelievable. So uh, let's be professionals here. Unless you have hardcore evidence, you don't bring it to us, you bring it to the city manager in a private setting and let them investigate and deal with it publicly. I mean, would you want that to happen to you? And it may not even be true. And, and I, it's just shocking. So I would ask that everyone be professional. If you have an issue with a city employee, follow the protocol. We wouldn't want to go out on the streets and just start you know, yelling things, oh, somebody did this or that or had a, slept with this person or whatever. That's pretty serious. That can actually damage a person beyond what you understand completely because this is now on tape and it's also on the internet and, and whether it be true or not, that's really unfair to that employee and those individuals. I'm sure the city manager will look into it and report back to wherever he needs to, but he's the administrator. We hire him as our CEO to do the job that he needs to do and I support that. But uh, I just, I'm really beside myself. But as an employer, that's shocking. Karen Doris Wright, followed by Jason Hunter. Jason Hunter, followed by Karen Doris Wright, followed by Rachel Sterling. First, I want to address your complete attack on Vivian Marino. If you would have listened to her, she was reading an email from one of your employees who is terribly uncomfortable with the situation here. If you had decent legal counsel when all this was going on, there is a huge case where inappropriate sexual relationships were occurring and promotions were occurring, and it was huge liability for the state because the other employees were like, you know what, I'm not willing to do that. So do not get up here and tout your almighty, eth I mean, I am just appalled. This is the First Amendment. If you don't like what she has to say, step down, okay? And Mike and Paul, you were the only two that were doing anything right. You're telling us to follow process. Look what happens when we follow process. Should we follow the same process when they went after you two? Was that proper process? Was what was done to you, Mike, fair? Was that fair? Is that the process I should follow? The one you went through? I don't know. From this end, it didn't look too fair. So I'd say your process doesn't do jack for anybody, okay? 
So your employees are telling Vivian, because they can't tell any of you because you won't listen, that they are uncomfortable, that they believe people are having inappropriate sexual relationships and that they are getting promotions above people who should be getting them legitimately. It is a real concern. There is case law right on point, and a huge settlement was paid out. So wake up, okay? The other thing that really upset me is, Mike, you asked us to slow down, okay? We are already at a snail's pace. I am sorry that your staff of 2,000 cannot keep up with our intellectual ability of a handful of people. Perhaps you should not fire your best and brightest and you could keep up, but you can't because you get rid of anybody who has a brain, okay? You know that, you have ratified that process, it continues to occur, you continue to get discrimination lawsuits. Mr. McDougall, I've told you over and over about what's been going on in HR, how incompetent your staff is. This, this, this alcohol and this comment about African Americans came from somebody who is in the HR department, okay? It didn't come from Vivian. So, I mean, there is quite a history at Montclair. I think you are somewhat biased in your opinion here, okay? I just have a couple things to say on this item. But first I wanna remind you that what I say here on this podium for my three minutes is mine to say, whether you are shocked by it or not. And let me tell you, I get shocked by the decisions that you make up here all the time. And let me tell you, great, great, great performance, Tom. I'm really happy with the work you're doing there. Um, I do wanna mention that. Good job. Okay, another thing is that there's a real reason that I did not go to the city manager with this information, because I know the Jackie story. And you guys don't know it. So let's not talk about that this is really low, okay? We need to all look at our own self first. And this came from your staff. And I have been up here Please talking to about your staff for a long time. Thank you very much. Rachel Sterling, followed by Karen Doris Wright.